outside of Jettede in Sweden. You can see the city right over there. Today is day 34 of my trip to Norway, Sweden and Denmark. Yeah, I've been wild camping here this night and I slept so good. It's so nice and quiet here. Despite uh, some people showing up pretty late in the evening, um, I think we're all just interested in getting our sleep, so that was that was nice. It's right now about 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, 9.45. That's actually perfect because um, the local store doesn't open until 10 and I need to go and get some supplies. <laughs> The plan for today is to continue south in Sweden, uh, pretty much the fastest route, I think. And then we'll just have to see what pops up along the way. Um, I still have a few like points I want to check out, people I want to meet uh, further south in Sweden. But up here, all my, my check marks are pretty much um, done. There's probably a heck lot more to see that I just don't know about. So yeah, that is the plan for today. So uh, let's see what today has to offer. So today is actually a, a Sunday and as a Norwegian it feels it feels a little bit strange going to uh, a store on a on a Sunday. Is it open though? Yeah, Saturday to Sunday, 9 to 18? It's been open for an hour already? What? Google did me dirty. Anyway, that's pretty nice. coming to the end of uh, the wilderness roads uh, it ends here in uh, Strömsund that are arriving just a couple kilometers um, I wonder if there is somewhere perhaps I can find the coffee in Strömsund before continuing I found a perfect lunch spot at Café Tomten a over 300 year old building located in Strömsund's Hembygdsgård, where you can visit several old well-preserved buildings. This one was also built in the 18th century and was used as some sort of municipal office.
friend of mine. He's also a YouTuber, UNS Adventures. Gave me advice about checking out this camping. Should be pretty nice and quiet and small. So. Looking good. Having a bit of work to catch up with and laundry to do, I decided to set camp a bit earlier than usual. This calm camping turned out to be a great travel office. And accompanied by hundreds of these black flies, I finished my work and called it a day. Good morning guys and welcome to day 35. And right now, just uh, just outside of um, Östersund in Sweden, uh, it's about 20 degrees outside, so pretty nice and nice and warm. I think there's some rain coming today. Um, there's a little bit darker clouds in the horizons, and sometimes you can just like feel it in the wind and air, and like it feels like it's it's just about to just about to rain. So we'll see. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, the plan for today is I'm uh, heading south. Uh, in about a couple hours, I'm meeting up with with someone who uh, I've been very much looking forward to, to meeting. It's, uh, he's, uh, he's got kind of a legend status in, uh, in Norway, in Sweden, and uh, Scandinavia, or the Nordic countries. Or His name is Elving Sulli, and he has been doing gravel roads for like, I don't know, like 40 years up here. He knows all the places to go, he knows all the roads to ride. Um, yeah, everyone pretty much knows who he is. He has so many stories to tell. He used to work at the a motorcycle magazine, I believe. I think he's, uh, he's retired and spends a lot of time with, with his uh, grandkids and, and wife. That is the plan for today. What is she doing? Oh. Repairing a row piece by piece. Los, where I'm meeting Edwin and his buddy. I have no idea where we are supposed to meet, so look for some place that looks like somewhere <laughs> bikers could possibly meet, I guess. Should it be here? That's a cool little car. After a short wait, I could hear the familiar sound of motorcycles, and Elving and his riding buddy Jürgen Edvardsson turned up. Accompanied by the sun, coffee and snacks, it was a joy listening to their motorcycle stories. And just like any bikers meeting up, checking out the bikes is part of it. It's always interesting to get more experienced riders' opinion about one of my favorite motorcycle accessories, the twin pegs. I also came to learn that the Husqvarna logo shows a gun sight viewed from the end of the barrel. Did you know that? I also came to mention that I hadn't really tried lifting my bike yet and was a bit unsure about the technique. Without having to say more, they arranged a quick crash course in lifting technique. And would you look at that, with luggage and everything. Thank you guys! We eventually parted, Elving and Jürgen continuing their trip going north and myself continuing going south. Oh, what a pleasant meetup, you guys. What a great pair of guys. They got so many good stories and so much experience to share. And did you guys see I lifted the bike? So that was cool. 
I, I didn't think I would be able to do that actually, especially not with all the luggage on, but it turned out if I just have the, the right technique, it's not a problem. They are continuing uh, north, they have like two or three days to want to ride around and, uh, and just uh, have fun with no particular plan, which is just how we like, like our trips, isn't it? What do you prefer, this horse or the other? <laughs> this is a Darla Hest, or the Darla Horse. And it's kind of become a symbol of, uh, of this region, Dalarna, in Sweden. I did some reading about it, and it's uh, usually carved in wood, and it was made originally as a, a toy, I think, for, for kids. I've seen them quite a bit along the last uh, kilometers now, so I had to stop and and check them out, that's quite, quite cool. Standing here looking for a place to camp and around this lake it looks like there could be camping possibilities. I think I'll just head out here and uh, see what it looks like. It's only 10, min 10 minutes from the main road, so nice little detour on the gravel. There's the lake. And this is the spot. Should we camp here, you guys? I think we will. So it's actually like a really nice place, just a little bit further down the road here. But there is a family there right now, uh, just swimming and that kind of stuff, but I think they're about to leave. So, fingers crossed that uh, I can have a place tonight. They're leaving. <laughs> Score! Ta-da! How perfect is this? One hundred percent perfection. Time to, to wrap up the day and what a fantastic evening to do so. I'm sitting here just relaxing. I just finished uh, another episode for my YouTube channel 
and read, uh, reading this book that I got from uh, Elving today. It's called uh, The Rugged Road, and it's about Theresa Wallach and Florence... What was her name? Florence Blenkiron from the UK, who went from London to Cape Town with a Panther motorcycle and sidecar pulling a trailer in 1935. Now that's pretty, pretty inspiring stuff. If they could do it back then, then you know, the Lord knows we can do a lot more today. Anyway, I am currently uh, just a little bit north of Falun in Sweden, uh, driven about, I think like 300 kilometers or something, 250, 300 kilometers today, I think. And uh, yeah, it's been a really, really nice day. It's strange, just, isn't it? When you wake up and you have no idea, you know, if this is going to be a good day or a bad day. And then there's all this great stuff just waiting for you. Really, really nice meeting Elving and, and uh, Jürgen today. The plan for tomorrow, I'm continuing south to Degelfors, which is about 250 kilometers, I think. Uh, I'm meeting up with, and I'm going to stay with uh, Jonas from Jonas Adventures. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're just going to go for a ride, I believe. Uh, and then uh, he kindly offered a bed and a shower and laundry machine and that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I've, I've known him for like three years, I think now. And so I never met him before. So that's really enjoyable having the opportunity to be, you know, nearby here and, and, uh, and say hi. But yeah, thank you for, uh, for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, then I'll see you again for the next. Bye!